Hey folks, I'm gonna try a new adventure today. I'm gonna try water glassing eggs. Hang with me and I'll share uh, with you guys what I found out how to do this. Hello, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. I'm shooting for a new adventure today in my um, desire to want to learn how to preserve certain foods that you don't get all the time for long shelf life. And I learned that an, a, a, an old uh, method of water glassing eggs in a lime pickling lime will preserve the eggs for up to a year and a half. So let's collect some fresh eggs and try this water glassing. The stuff I learned about eggs is you want to get fresh eggs. The fresher the better. You don't want to use store-bought eggs or eggs that have been sitting around for several days. Fascinating creatures, these hens. Got another place to get some eggs. Hello, you old bitty. Nope, nothing yet. She's busy. Now, depending on the breed of chicken you have, you can get uh, you can get blue eggs, you can get brown eggs, uh, you can get green eggs. Well, this is kind of blue, and white eggs. And I don't know if you know this. Uh, most all eggs are white with a special coating that uh, adds the pigment to the outside. Now, since we're talking about eggs, I want to take you guys inside and share with you guys some interesting facts I came up with on the eggs and is water glassing really safe? I want to find out. So let's go in and check out what we got. So let's talk about the egg. So let's see how good egg production is on average from these chickens. One bird can produce about 208 eggs in a, in a year's period, which is a weekly production of about four eggs uh, per week per bird. Now, eggs are part of the reproductive system of a chicken. When a hen reaches maturity, lighting conditions trigger hormones to start the egg-laying uh, cycle. It takes about 25 hours for a hen to create an egg from start to finish. As soon as one egg is laid, the whole process starts all over again and a new egg begins to form. This is an illustration of what the hen's anatomy looks like. You've got the ovary, which holds thousands of tiny ova, or future eggs. An interesting note that eggs are formed in layers starting from the inside out. Here's how. Let's look at the yolk first. It starts with the yolk forming in the hen's ovary. When the yolk reaches the right size, it is released to the oviduct, where the rest of the egg will form. Now we got that white part. Let's see how that's made. The egg continues its journey through the oviduct. The next layer to be added is the egg white, or the albumen. This layer takes about three hours to be formed. Now the egg has a hard shell surface. Next, we're gonna discuss how that layer is made. When the shell is added in the oviduct, it is the shell membrane. This takes 
about an hour and 15 minutes to make. It is a very thin layer between the egg white and the shell. And it almost looks like tissue paper. Have you ever cracked an egg shell, but the egg didn't break? The shell membrane was still intact. And every once in a while, I go out there and grab an egg, and it's really mushy, like a rubber ball, because the shell didn't form. Something malfunctioned in that hen. And now we get to the actual production of the hard shell. The egg when it reaches the hen's uterus, also known as the egg shell gland, this is where the shell is added. All egg shells begin as white. Blue and brown pigments are added during the shell forming process. The color of the pigment depends on the breed of chicken. An interesting note about egg coloration, brown pigment is added last in the formation of an egg shell. It is only found on the surface of the egg. When you crack the egg open and inside of the egg, she will be white. Blue pigment is added earlier in the shell formation process. The color will penetrate the entire shell. When you crack open a brown egg, the inside of the egg shell will be white. And as far as white eggs go, they contain no pigment at all. Now continuing down the process of the egg coming out, getting ready to pop out of the vent. Yeah. Uh, a, a substance is added to the egg called the bloom. The bloom is a protective layer, or it's also called a cuticle. It covers the egg shell and is the last layer added to an egg formation. If you ever went out and saw a hand lay an egg and it's all wet, or you just find an egg that's freshly laid and it's warm and it's wet, that's the bloom or the cuticle. This cuticle layer, or bloom layer, seals against bacteria from entering into the egg and also protects it from losing moisture. Let's look in the microscope and see just how porous that egg is. This micron microscopic image I downloaded, it was free from the CDC, shows an up close and personal view of the outer coating of the shell. You can see there's space in there. This allows for gases to get escape and air to go in. And this is why um, the bloom is put on to help protect that coating. Now stick with me because this is where water glassing comes in and there's a couple of other methods you can use to preserve eggs uh, with fluid or liquid. In cases that um, an egg goes bad, uh, some bacteria somehow got into it. Now mind you, in a chicken, this egg passes through the vent. It's the same hole through which the hen passes all of her body waste. Yep, it's the poop chute. And that could be a vector for the introduction of E. coli. E. coli can also get up into her ovary tract. So this is a picture of what a E. coli bacterium looks like. They're very tiny, they're very small, but they're very harmful to humans. So that's why we want to uh, preserve our eggs if we're going to preserve them. It's best just to have a, a certain amount of hands on hand. My breed of hands, these are Buff Orpingtons. I've got a couple of ones that I've um, adopted for a while until their mommy uh, gets her coop in order because she moved. So they're the ones that are laying the colored eggs and my hands lay the brown eggs. So this breed is why I chose this breed Buff Orpington is they're really furry, fluffy. They're also big. They'll dress the table up really nice when I start culling them but they also tend to lay eggs throughout the year. They do slow down in the production, but they do tend to lay eggs throughout the year. I get eggs every month, uh, but this time, of, this season, I get a lot of eggs. So a couple of ways I've learned that uh, pioneers have preserved eggs, they would store them in sand, a box of sand, and then the sand would keep 
things from getting into the eggs also, but they wouldn't have as long a shelf life as you would when you water glass them. Water glassing is just uh, containing them in water that has dissolved in it some pickling lime. Uh, I just bought this package down at my can uh, supply house and it's very inexpensive. And I, only, I will only be using uh, one ounce for every quart I use. So I've got these jars down here and I've got the eggs and we're going to be filling about two jars. And I think I'll probably be using a uh, three quarters of a gallon uh, in these jars. I got one jar already filled. And if you notice, I tried to put them all the small side down because an egg yolk is suspended in the middle and the airspace on top. So you want to keep the egg at that you know, point, small end pointed down. So if you're storing it for a year and a half, it has not settled. The yolk has not settled from one side to the other. It stays suspended right in the middle. And I've seen where people have had uh, eggs that were on their side and they come out kind of um, not looking right. They may still be good, but it just it's just not the right kind of looking egg you want. Now, of course, the, uh, the FDA, the CDC, they don't recommend uh, water glassing eggs, even though it's been, pre uh, it's been a habit performed by our grandparents, our great-grandparents, our great-great-grandparents. And yes, there is the risk of an egg in some time uh, in the batch that you're saving up. Uh, could be bad. So that's why it's always important to break an egg open in its own container before you dump it into your cooking pot to make sure you get a good whiff of it, look at the texture, look at the consistency and determine if it's a bad egg. Don't even, don't even try it. So water bath canning is a method that you do at your own risk. Another way I've seen people store eggs I uh, is just coating them in mineral oil and just setting them in the egg carton and keeping them in the uh, refrigerator. Now the jar method, the water glass method, these will be safe to store on your shelf in a larder or a pantry. Now mind you, a larder or pantry, should the temperature should be maintained between 50 degrees and 70 degrees. You want to keep it below 70 and above 50. That's the median temperature, around 60, uh, to safely store food and keep the light out of it. Uh, unless you go in to grab something and run out. No light, keep it cool, keep it dry. Yep, and that's the methods of a larder and, or a pantry. Now water blessing is only recommended for fresh eggs. That's how come I went out and I pulled some fresh eggs. I got some from yesterday and today and we're filling these two jars with eggs. I should add, don't wash the eggs because you'll wash the bloom off. Uh, just pick out eggs that don't have stool on them that are clean and that's why it's important to keep fresh a bedding down in your nest so your hands don't um, cover the egg with poop. So I got the egg and my little tongs. My mother, I inherited these from my mother. These were actually used for baby bottles when I was a baby uh, for reaching in the pot and grabbing the baby bottles. Now I'm laying the egg in there carefully and I'll just keep the jar on its side till I stack full of eggs and make sure it's all pointed towards the bottom. Now that I got the jars filled, I'm gonna go ahead and mix my water and my lye solution they recommend you using filtered water or uh, purified water because you don't want the chemicals from the city water system in these glass jars. Since we're on a well, we just use this purifier to uh, give us the water we need. Okay, I have 160 ounces of room temperature filtered water. Now I'm going to measure out my pickling line. And since it's caustic, I'm using gloves and a mask. Not taking any chances.
and then just pour enough water in there of the solution to submerge all the eggs. Now I'm going to wipe the rims off because I'm going to put the lids on here and I'm going to seal, vacuum seal these containers. And then right now I'm just going to vacuum seal these with my kit that I got. Releases the vacuum and put this one on, set it. And then mark the date on the lids and then place them in my larder. Right down here. Yep. Now, you can easily turn a cupboard like this into a larder. Uh, you just want some uh, um, airflow going through there and you put a you put a hole screened of course, real small screen right in the bottom corner of, uh, uh, as far back as you can go through your floor down under your house put a vent in there and then cover it with screen and then up on top you want to cut a vent hole for when the chamber is uh, heated up hot air by nature rises and draws the cool air in from underneath your house to maintain a nice steady temperature of right around 60 degrees depending on uh, uh, the year uh, the, the season but it'll it'll stay within that 50 to 70 degree range so that's a homestead hack for you to make your own larder so having hens producing fresh eggs daily for you throughout the year you don't have to worry about something like this uh, but if you do get eggs uh, make sure they're fresh I mean laid that day or within the last uh, 24 to 48 hours is best to use those eggs for your preserving they uh, do best store-bought eggs don't even try it with those uh, there's other methods to uh, cook up an egg and uh, dehydrate it or freeze dry it but those don't even guarantee you're not going to get E. coli bacterium bad so do these methods at your own risk this is not a conclusive uh, way of preserving eggs but this is a method demonstrating how our ancestors used throughout the, uh, the years, generations, in preserving eggs through the winter months. I'm Jerry Hansen, your host, Dude in the Kitchen. Stay tuned to more videos. You could do that by subscribing and clicking that bell icon that alerts you to new videos as I upload them. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, uh, compliment, hint, tip, trick hack i don't care give me some ideas i'm still uh taking the adventure of homesteading be safe always be kind we'll see you guys in my next adventure this one was fun i love science